are starting the vlog later than normal and that is because with a filtered Chrysal, you do not have to do more than one water change a day, which is crazy. So we just fed the morning feeding. The strawberry that was in the birthing suite last night in the last vlog, we took her out because she was very stressed in there and we decided that we would rather miss the opportunity of her eggs and her be comfortable rather than guarantee her eggs in that birthing suite and her be stressed out. She does still have her eggs, but we just let her out um, to help her be more comfortable. So that is what's happening with her. Um, as far as these guys, there are a few more dead ones in there, but when you have this many, that's just gonna happen. This is um, a pretty normal rate that this is all happening at. Um, they're eating fine, they're doing great. We are feeding a lot more and more frequently because there are so many of them. We don't want them to get hungry. Um, and then because we don't know what species they are, they could be cannibalistic for all we know. And we do not want to risk anything with these guys because um, who knows, this could be our last uh, attempt for the year if all of our other crabs don't spawn properly. Hey guys. <laughs> so actually these filtered crystals are pretty cool because we're sitting around like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna vlog? I don't know, let's show more pictures of the baby swimming. <laughs> so here you go, more pictures of the baby swimming. So we are trying the birthing suite one more time um, with the strawberry. She still has her eggs, um, but uh, we don't want her to be stressed out. We made some adjustments. We added some more support to this so that it wouldn't move as much. Made it taller. And then we made it taller so maybe yeah. she, um, so we can add more water so she can go completely under and so she won't be as close to the water um, in this thing. So. We're gonna try that and see how it works. And please spawn in here, Mama Strawberry. She's up there turning her eggs. Yeah, she's right there. And there's the daddy. Oh, like how they stay the close. Gunther and Monica's that way too. They're so sweet. Anyway, that's to me that's usually a really good sign that they're about to spawn is when the male crab is clo stays close to the female crab. Alright, so we have decided there's too many Zoe in this one side of the chrysal. We're a little bit concerned as they grow and shed and there's just too many. There's too many in here. So they were doing really well in the saltwater pool where they were spawned, which had this live sand in the bottom um, and it was just a filtered, regular old filter tank. They even had rocks and everything in there. Anyway, so we are going to do a little experiment, put a few of these Zoe 
back um, in this five, five and a half gallon with some live sand and some bubblers to aerate the water and keep them moving um, some. We also noticed in there in the pool they were eating something in this um, live sand, which is full of great stuff for them. And so um, we're gonna kind of see how they do without being in the chrysal. Um, this will just be for a day if things aren't going well, we have a plan B. So we're naming this Cenobita Enigmus Gargantuous. And so basically we don't know what they are. So we want to keep them, uh, and we have so many, like there's so many of them. So if we're going to do any kind of experiment, we should do it with this, these guys because we have so many. Um, and we'll leave the other chrysal for the strawberry crabs. All right guys, here is the end to day two already. And um, it feels really weird to not be doing any water changes. Uh, we've been busy today, but um, so yeah, we, we've been busy today. Anyway, it's not over yet. So we still have two more feedings to get through and we're trying to catch the mama straw and put her in the uh, birthing suite, but uh, she is not cooperating. She's hung on to some toya wood up in the topper. And so um, we're just leaving her be for now. Like I said, we have two more feedings. So maybe she'll come down later when the lights are out. Hey guys. We are on day three of CCS Journey to Land attempt number four, and it is like the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, we haven't vlogged at all today. Um, so right now, you guys, what we are working on is we're gonna do a water change. This is gonna be our second one. We did one yesterday, but we didn't do the water change within the Chrysal where the Zoe are. So we didn't have any like pipe heading Zoe out. Remember, this is all filtered. So this all this water is kind of like being filtered throughout the whole chrysal. And so instead, we took out some water from over here where there's nothing, and then we replaced it with the holding tank water about 25%. So it was super fast, super easy. Um, yeah, we did that to raise the salinity, not that it was dirty, um, because it was a little bit low. I don't think we've explained the salinity issues. Oh, that's true. So you want to explain that? Okay, so you know, we weren't planning on the spawn. We didn't know it was gonna happen. So they spawned it in our pool within our crab tank um, in our build. And so the salinity in that pool just happened to be 31. You know, within the tank, the water, especially if you have bubblers, the water evaporates over time. And so the, the water leaves, but the salt stays. And so unless we're doing a complete change of our pool, which we do every once in a while, um, we just top it off with fresh water. And then we test it periodically to kind of see where it is. Anyway, so it happened to be at 31, um, and obviously that was high enough salinity. They were spawned there. Mm -hmm. They were doing really good too. Yeah, thriving. And so we wanted to start the chrysal kind of in that area so that we didn't shock them. So we used 50% of the water from that saltwater pool in the tank, and then we mixed new saltwater um, with our reverse, reverse osmosis water. Yeah, um, for the other 50%. And we started mixing it exactly like we always have. A half a cup of reef crystals to every gallon of water. Well, <laughs> after we tested it, um, our salinity in this tank was at 30. Remember in past attempts, we would mix our salt water like that and it would be at 34, 35. With the same amount of salt, the same amount of water. So we realized, so basically how the reading salinity works is you have your, um, what is it called, refractometer, refractometer, and it reads the amount of salt particles in the water. And so it tells you how many parts per thousand of salt is in that little drop of water you put in. And we realized that our water has other particles in it. Tap water. Or tap water. Yes, either calcium or something like that. So it was actually throwing off the salinity up reading with the refractometer and RO water is pure water and so you know that you're getting a very accurate reading when you're using that in the refractometer. So our salinity has probably been consistently low with our breeding attempts. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but really high in calcium because that's our top water was extremely high in calcium. Yes. Read the blog if you guys want some more details on that. But 
Anyway, so um, yeah, so then yesterday we spent a good amount of time trying to figure out how much salt we needed per gallon using the RO. And once we finally found like that sweet spot, we started to mix some more um, RO in here so we can slowly raise the salinity. And today we checked our salinity and it was at... In the Chrysler? Yeah. It was at 34, just under 35. Yeah, so that's right where we want it to be. So. Um, excellent. Yeah. Anyways, so that's the salinity, salinity thing, and then um, that's what you worked on this morning. Oh, you also checked the water quality. Yes. So we had the test kit, which we realized we purchased the wrong one, or we purchased it for a different reason, to test for phosphates for the algae, but it didn't test ammonia, so now we have ordered the second <laughs> salt water kit that tests ammonia, but that kit that we do have tests for nitrates. Um, and if you know how the nitrogen cycle works, bacteria transfers ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. So we checked the nitrates, um, and you want to explain what the levels were? So on the outside water, they were zero. But in this chrysal, where all of our zoe are, where all the food is, and, and um, I don't think they're pooping yet, but no. Anyway, so the food waste and any that may have died or sheds and that sort of thing, um, inside that chrysal, it was five, which is not a dangerous amount, but we, we want to do a water change anyway just because, you know, we know that there's there's stuff in there, and so we're going to go ahead and do a water change. Yeah. And there are so many Zoe in this chrysal that it is unbelievably difficult to just get a pipette of water out of there without getting a Zoe. Okay guys, we were setting this up and I put the thermometer in the 5.5 gallon tank and it is a little bit cold at 77 and we weren't quite comfortable with that temperature, especially moving the Zoe from the 82 to here. So I had an idea and we're gonna see if it works and I'm gonna show you my This idea. might not work, but I was thinking that we have our 5.5 gallon tank and the babies go on the outside. And then we have this jar with water in it that is higher than the level of the other water. And if the heater's inside and just heats up that water, then it should also give heat to the tank water heating up the babies without the babies touching the heater. So we're gonna try that. Do you think it'll work? I think it's worth a try. I think yeah. it'll help. So um, we're going to monitor that and the glass temperature to make sure they don't get too hot. But we're just going to try and see. Three, four, okay. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven in here. We are siphoning the Zoe out to put them in the 5.5 gallon. And you know, we can't really tell if they're attracted to the light or just happen to be going by the light because there's a lot of them. You can kind of see the sheer number of them better in the dark. But yeah, that's what we're up to. Now we are going to do a partial water change in here, get all the dead ones out, get any food we see, clean off the mesh, um, so that we can get this keep the water clean. Even though it's filtered, you still do have to do some water changes, just not as frequently. All right, you guys, that is, wow, it's almost the end of day three. We do have one more thing to do, but we thought we were gonna finish out our vlog before we do that. So I think it was a great day. The babies look really good. Oh my gosh, they're very active. They move a lot. They're eating. We think yeah. their gut tracts have developed. We actually saw orange belly. It's overall going great. Yeah, I hate, it's scary to say that because, you know, we always say that days one through five. Yeah, <laughs> things are great. So day seven. And then we get that, so it's like, and then, like, of course, now we're posting on TikTok, and everyone's so excited over there. Yeah. And it's hey. just scary.
scary, like they might not make it, but well, that's how it goes. That's, it's science. And we're actually, I believe, only the second people to try a filtered cycle, a filtered chrysal. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, like, we're all still learning, you guys, but how awesome would it be if this actually works? So, you know, we just have to be the pioneers, like Mary likes to call us, we're the mm -hmm. pioneers. And we just have to tread the this journey and make tracks and you know try what we can so that's what we're doing we're feeling really optimistic about it right now we're actually feeling pretty rested because literally we're just waiting for feeding times now yeah <laughs> um oh one other thing we did get the strawberry in the birthing um sweet so i this is birthing sweet third edition version three version three whatever um so how, she looks more comfortable already like yeah. she's not frantic in there and so I think she's like she knows what she has to do. It's a full moon tonight, so we feel like this is probably gonna be the night. So we're excited. We might have strawberry Zoe tomorrow. We'll let you guys know. Okay. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be sure to subscribe down below and check out the description. There are tons of links there, tons of information. Um, it'll get you where you need to be. If you're not following us on TikTok, the girls have gotten like all kinds of excited about it and so they they are posting there a lot we did a live there today actually as well it's the first time that we've done a live on tiktok so follow us over there you guys we're trying to post some more stuff for you there mm -hmm. and then follow our other social medias as well you get behind the scenes pictures and videos of the babies and of our crabs as well so go ahead and do that all right thank you guys so much for watching bye see you guys later bye